church from <laughs> that was a good start good morning my name is paul church from clarity stamp here in edenbridge in the uk oh dear i really fluffed that up started today that was really weird welcome to another episode of groovy tuesday should we just rewind hopefully there was nobody in the room so nobody was paying any attention um that's really strange i get it off to a t good morning mo um there we go weather reports coming in already nice and sunny um yes it's lovely and sunny here in edenbridge in kent in the uk uh good morning helen there we go everybody's coming in this morning jill all the lovely regulars first in the queue um but you know what there's no queue is there that should be my all clear from stuart thank you stuart the sound is nice and clear sometimes i wish it wasn't clear after that little flap at the, the beginning so um How's everybody doing today? Tuesday again. This will be the final week of the um, grid work. I have a lovely um, design to look forward to to next week. So I, I went and had a look at um, all the groovy designs and I thought, yeah, this one will work really well. Whether you're a beginner, whether you've been doing it for a few months, a few years, you've been doing it for donkey's years, it will cover us all. So, um, there we go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy Groovy Tuesday it is indeed. Good morning. Oops. Good morning, Ken. So lovely to have everybody's company. So here we go. I see everyone does it automatically. All the weather reports come in. So just need to look at the day in front of us, which is Tuesday. And everyone seems to be having lots of lovely sunshine um it is cold um and what was it when i was driving in this way i had frost on the car this morning um so i had to scrape the car off and it's quite sort of fresh but in the sun it's lovely and warm um which is nice so i'm not sure what the the weather forecast is for the easter bank holiday weekend normally on a bank holiday it's normally a bit rubbish isn't it um but take each day as it comes it is what it is um yeah easter bank holiday it only feels like yesterday it was christmas where has the time gone i know i said the c word sorry <laughs> but we're already looking ahead we're already looking at christmas designs um to keep you occupied so um there um yeah the c word Good morning, Jane. Beautiful and frosty, but it's lovely now. Okay, so do we have any newbies today? Anyone tuning in for the first time? I'm sure we do. Um, we also go international. We also have some viewers joining us from Australia and America. Anybody out there from abroad? I know Lorraine's normally with us and she's in Spain. Um, haven't seen her name pop up. I'm sure she is. Um, she's always there. She's meant to be working, I think, but she always tunes in. So, um, yeah, so everything is tickety-boo, as they say. Um, oh, that's what I've just said, anyway. Yeah, so I thought we'd finish off on our uh, bookmark today and we'll have a look at what I've got planned for the next few weeks going forward. So if you haven't got the plate, it gives you the opportunity to, to jump ahead um, and get that if you want to join in again. Or you may just want to watch the first couple of episodes and see whether you like what we're doing. And then you can decide to buy it then. So um, time goes seems to go so quickly these days, it makes me think it's an age thing. We think about it too much. We do indeed. Sometimes we do, don't we? Um, where does the time go? I was just having a conversation um with sue who runs our clubs and we were just talking about age and said one minute it's sort of like i don't know sweet 16 and the next thing you know you're not <laughs> but we all grow old together we all grow old at the same pace um so it's not as if some are advancing quicker than others <laughs> the body may feel like it at times <laughs> but um but no so there we go. So everybody's 
coming in. So lovely, lovely, lovely. It's only just gone 10 o'clock. So you can pull up a seat um, and we'll get in the groove, I think. So I have a bit of a recap because this is part 14 of the easy grid work or lace work. Um, if you have any questions, Stuart's in the room and I've seen Jane in there as well. Um, not sure whether Glynis and Josie are in the room, um, but they're normally sort of lurking in the background. Lurking's not the right word, is it? They're normally there. Um, so I'm sure they'll make an appearance at some point. Uh, okay. So let's, while everyone's pulling up a chair, getting a brew and finding somewhere to sit. So there's no queuing. You can just sit wherever you want. Okay. So how many have we got? 85 people so far in the rooms. And if there was 85 people in this room, it would be a very tight squeeze. It really would. So, um, the joys of technology. Okay. So, we've been looking at one of Josie's duet plates. And this allows us to achieve beautiful framework, borders, um, corners with ease. To get a really nice look to our, our centrepieces. Um, and it is a skill to be able to achieve something like that but the plates make it easy. So I've got a couple of pieces here. So this one has been created by Josie herself. So it's got the, the lovely floral numbers in the middle and it's finished off with that gorgeous frame. Then we have a piece by Francis. Different color options. See, we're doing this on clear parchment. You can do it on designer parchment. Um, you can do it on the rainbow parchment. You can do it on the solid colours. You get really different. But for me, to do it on the clear parchment, um, you get, you use the designer papers behind it or the companion papers, and it gives it a lift, just like this one that Glynis has created. So using the floral alphabet, the lovely frame, and that beautiful orange companion paper to tie in with the colouring. And then we have a final piece from the lovely Jane. A real sort of bold and bright, but look at the colour of the parchment. So this is using one of our, what colour has Jane used, does it say? No, it doesn't say what colour Jane's used. But when you look at the comparisons by using the, the coloured parchment as opposed to the clear parchment, see, and that's clear, and that's clear as well. You can achieve a different look. So the reason they were called ribbon duet plates was because the way in which Josie designed them, it allowed you, if you chose to, thread ribbon through the various different slots. And what we did initially was we created a frame very simply, okay? And we had the choices if we wanted to pico cut or not pico cut. And as we've learned over the past few weeks is that the design works whether you want to pico cut or not. So if you're not that far on your um, groovy bus journey, then it's not a problem because you'll still get um, a lovely result. So Jane said she used the pack with the green and the orange. Ah, so that was the orange squash and lime twist. Lovely. I suppose it looks slightly different, doesn't it? Because it's on that yellow. If I pop, let me grab a, a piece of white card and pop it underneath. And you can see, I have to be careful. Yeah, you can see that there is a slight difference on the colouring. With the white. I can't push it any further because Jane's attached it underneath the ribbon with tape. Okay, but if I pop that one onto there, yeah, look at that. You can really see that um, orange squash and lime twist. Beautiful, really nice. So that's what we created initially in part of the um, tutorials that we've been doing on Facebook and YouTube. And if you want to see how this is created, then just go back to part one of the easy grid work 
um, and just follow it step by step. And it really is. Once you get, it's quite addictive. Once you get the hang of creating these frames, it's really quite difficult to stop because you want to sort of finish off all your artwork with a lovely frame. And in the diagonal version of these um, designs, there's four different plates. Okay, so this one is Hope You Feel Better Soon. Okay, so all these pieces have been created by Josie to show us off. Um, then we have the Season's Greetings. Then we have the Thinking of You. And then finally, we have the one that we've been working on, which is Sending Love Your Way. So you can see if I, let me see if I can just spread these out. So they all have different characteristics to them. So maybe if you're new to using the grid work, maybe you might prefer to do one that's a little bit slimmer than this one that's a little bit wider. It's all about having the choices and making it achievable for you. Okay. So that's what we created initially, which was the frame. And you'll notice it has these double lines around the outside and the inside. And what we did when we designed the plates on all of our grid plates, we introduced these double lines so that if you didn't want to pico cut all the way around the outside, like Josie has here, then by introducing those lines, we just trimmed it down with a craft knife and a ruler or a paper trimmer or a guillotine. And we covered that in one of the sessions as well. Okay. Then I thought what we'd do, because what we did was we took the design exactly how it came. We didn't make it longer. We didn't make it shorter. We just took the complete width of the design, did all the embossing first, turned it around, and then just joined it back up. Okay. Then what I thought would be a good idea is that if we made a bookmark. So this is how we've, far we've got so far. And I just thought it's really nice as a, a keepsake, isn't it? I mean, the cards you make with the era beautiful keepsake, you really want, if you give that to someone, you would hope that they'd keep it on display forever. Um, but a, a bookmark, I think is a really nice sort of, it's a gift to go with the cards. And if you've got the same, if you use the same plate as your frame, as you do on your bookmark, then you've got that connection, haven't you? So what we did was we looked at how we extended the design. Because if you look here, and you remember I said to you I'd made a little bit of a boo-boo last week where I had two sort of dips, deep dips as opposed to a short dip. But it doesn't matter, does it? Nobody's going to look at that and go, oh, you went wrong there, didn't you? Because it's the overall effect. As long as you're aware of what you've done. And I only was aware of it last week after I did it all. So, <laughs> so don't think, oh, no, it's not right. I think it adds a, an extra little element to it. And I think it also shows the versatility of the designs. Okay, so what we did, we did all of our embossing first, then on the plate, you've then got the drilled holes, which allows us to do the perforating. See, all the work's been done, all the counting's been done, you haven't got to worry about perforating in the wrong place. As long as you line it up, then you're unlikely to go wrong, he says, after he went wrong. But no, no, we're not going to call it wrong, we're going to call it we got creative with the design, okay? And then last week, we started to do the pico cutting into the various different areas. So I thought what we'll do today is we'll finish off our, our pico cutting and then we'll turn it into a bookmark, okay? And we've got a few top tips on, on doing that. Haven't decided yet whether I want to put the ribbon through or just leave the little pico cut apertures exactly as they are. I'll think about that one. Okay. 
So what we're going to need to start off with this or to finish off this session is a piece of artwork we've been created on. Um, what was I going to say? It's got, <laughs> I think my brain's frozen. Not only was the car frozen, but I think my brain's frozen. So we're going to need our piece of artwork. We're going to need a um, piece of Pico foam or super foam, which I'm working on. And we're going to need our scissors. Now, there's three different types of scissors. If you're new to your Pico cutting, we have our ring lock. We have our perga cutters or squizzers. Um, and we've also got our exclusives as well. So if you're new, these ones here, the exclusive scissors, these are the, the cheapest option if you want to give Pico cutting a go. And um, these are Barb's favorite. Barb uses these all the time. I can use all three of them, just like Barb can. Barb can use all three, but she feels more comfortable using these ones. For me personally, because I've got more chunky fingers, I find these ones more comfortable. However, if I was going to do the frame all in one go, then I would use the Perga cutters. Okay. So to finish off our um, snipping, I'm going to use our ring lock scissors. Now talking of sort of pico cutting, if you're finding that, I mean, there's, there's only so much that obviously I can show you visually on the YouTube um, and the Facebook lives. Um, but sometimes you want that one-to-one -one hands on experience. Now, if you do, then we have our open days on the 9th and 10th of June in Ditton, which is near Maidstone. So it's on a, it's just off the main motorway, I think it's the M20 um, in Kent. And if you're coming to our open days and you're struggling with your Pico cutting, or maybe you want to give Pico cutting a go for the first time, then the lovely Glynis will be running our SNP clinic. Yeah, careful how you say that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I just crossed my legs when I said that. <laughs> um, she'll be running the SNP clinic, and it will give you the opportunity to try the three different types of scissors. Um, but also, when you've got somebody that can do it in front of you, they can see exactly how you're holding the scissors. They can see exactly, you can show them what you're doing and then they can help you. I say they, Glynis, can help you correct that and perfect your Pico cutting. Okay, so I'm sure Stuart could pop a link up to the tickets. It's only eight pounds for the day, um, whether you come on the Friday or the Saturday. And I know many of you do make a, a big event of it and you come for the two days. Um, there'll be lots going on and it's 30 years of all things clarity. So I'm sure um, there'll be some extra celebrations. On the hour every hour, there's a free raffle. So when you come in, you're given a raffle ticket, which you keep for the whole day. And um, I was joking, Barb was talking about it yesterday, that she gets up on a chair um, and um, she calls out, picks a ticket out and choose, gets a winner. Um, and I sent her a text when she said that. I said, we'll get you a, a chairlift. <laughs> so you've got to keep getting up and down. <laughs> um, yeah, I won't say what she said. So, yeah, so... If, I mean, there's still plenty of time. We've got tickets available. Stuart's popped the link up. You can either order them online um, or you can give Janine a call in the office um, and she can take the order from you. If you want to do that, then the telephone number is 01732 868 215. That's 01732 868 215. And I, I so look forward to the open days because it's great to sort of have that um, interaction with people um, and friends. It is like a, a big family get together. So, um, so yeah, so really looking forward to that in June. Okay. Are we ready to get snipping? I think we are. I'll calm down a little bit now. I think the, the frozen brain's gone. 
we'll see. Let's see how the snipping goes, shall we? So in each of the plates, whichever plate you go for, Jose, you get a, an image, actual size of what it looks like completed. Okay. And then on the back, you get the instructions from Josie, and then you get a cutting guide on where to do the Pico cutting. Um, if you choose it, and you don't have to do all of it, you could just do elements of it, as we were talking about last week. Okay. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna bring my scissors in, excuse me, hiccups, and I'm gonna zoom in so we can come in really, really close. Which way am I going? There we go. And we can have a chat, can't we, whilst we're doing our pico cutting. Whee! Might be a little bit too close. Let me just check. Ooh, I reckon that's close. Are we okay with that? Can we see that? Or do we need to come in a little bit closer? I don't want to come in too close because it will start to go out of focus as I move my hands. Right, now I'm just going to bring my hands in and just make sure it doesn't go blurry. So if I start moving my hands, yep. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Are we all good with that? I think we are. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So if we have a look at the guide from Josie, you can see what we've done here. This area here is this area here. Okay. So we're gonna, I did that little section last week just to sort of get us started. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna go all in one direction first, just to save a little bit of time, and then go in another direction. It's just what I prefer to do. Some people prefer to do each little bit, a bit at a time. It's all about having choices. Definitely need my glasses. Get those out, make sure I can see through them. Let's have a look. Are they clean? They should be. I only wear them for for TV and YouTube. Okay, let's give them a little wipe. No harm in giving them a little wipe. And I think we're good to go. Okay. So let's have a look at these little sort of areas. We'll start off here. We'll ignore that for now. And we'll come back to those little zigzags. And we'll start on these ones, okay? And what we want to get is we want to, to have these little apertures. So the scissors, when we're doing our pico cutting, need to be over the area that's going to fall away. Okay. So I'm going to take my scissors. I come in from, from underneath with my scissors. And I have my scissors in the spoon position, i.e., it's pointing upwards as opposed to the fork position where they're pointed downwards. All of our scissors have a, a curve and they're all super, super pointed. Okay. So let's make a start. So I'm going to use this finger just to rest on. I'm going to move that out of the way so it doesn't distract me. And let's come over to about here. Now I'm using my 12 by 12 super foam because it's, it gives me a larger area to rest my wrist on. And we're just gonna go in and we're just gonna start to snip. Okay, and I'm just moving down. Should have started, I should, you know what, let's go for it. I'm gonna do everything in the one direction first. Okay. Now, some people will twist towards them. Some people will twist away from them. Some people don't twist at all. There's no rules to say you have to. It's whatever works for you when you're doing it. You may find that little twist works great. And then you may think that it doesn't. Okay, so let's ask Jane. Jane, do you twist 
or do you not twist? Let's have a little vote. Hands up who twists? Who does pico cutting and do they twist? Let's ask that question first. Hands up if you twist. Go on, let's have some interactions. I know you, there's somebody out there. Uh, we're going over here now. I, well, as soon as I say twist, that song comes into my head. Twist, twist, twist. No, not that song. What was it? Uh, who sang it? Um, let's twist again. Was that Chubby Checker? Did he sing? Let's twist again. I don't know if I could still do that. So we have a lot of twisters twisting the night away. <laughs> Linda's both. Um, Karin twists towards her. Sometimes a teeny little twist just for Mahid. Isn't it funny how the way in which people do things, but they still get the same result? Ken's a twister like Chubby Checker. It was, wasn't it? It was Chubby Checker. I was right. Well, I think I was right. I think with Ken's comment, I think he confirmed that. So, um, yeah, and the bit, I suppose the only downside of um, doing all these pieces in one direction first, I mean, it's not a downside, is that when you're talking and you're looking up at a screen, you could potentially miss some. But if you miss some, you just go back and do it. The bits that you miss, don't you? I mean, I'm sure if you're doing this at home, you're not looking up. Maybe you are. Maybe you're watching the TV or you're having a conversation with someone in the room. No. Once you get into that rhythm and it's that satisfying sound of that snip, isn't it? Dawn doesn't twist. Um, Susie Q <laughs> is a chubby checker. There we go. All right, so I reckon we we should um, we'll call it a new technique. We'll call it a chubby checker. I don't know if a copyright allows, but um... <laughs> oh dear, the things we come, well, the things I come up with. Should I say, not we, me. Oh, gone off the oh, gone off the page. Sorry about that. I was so carried away with my twisting. So carried away with my twisting. So I think I've got all the pieces in that direction. Okay, so now you'll notice that we well, may notice that I'm keeping my hat. This, although the scissors are moving along, my hand isn't really moving direction at all. I'm not twisting my hand. I'm twisting the scissors, okay? So, and I'm turning my work so it's comfortable for me. So now we're gonna go along and we're gonna do the, the top line, so to speak. So whilst we're, we're doing our twisting and we're doing our chubby checkers, what have I got to tell you this week? Wow, uh, where are we? Tuesday today. Those vases. Who was in the, the shack yesterday with Bob? Those vases were amazing. Um, when we were going up to the TV on Sunday morning, um, Bob showed me the pictures of what she'd been creating. Um, absolutely amazing. And you know what? I think what adds to it, I was saying to Bob afterwards yesterday, is that because she makes pots, I could sort of see the connection between the two. And I mean, I know it was only a sketch, but you can see there was, for me, there was definitely a connection 
between the pottery aspect and the doodling aspect of those vases. Um, yeah, it was, they were beautiful. I'd like a few vases like that, not just sketched. The designs on them were amazing. So yeah, so we had the, the shack with Barb yesterday. If you missed that, you can go back and watch that via our YouTube page. Um, it was bus number 302, I think it was yesterday. It was starting a brand new doodle with the vases and the foliage. Um, so that was yesterday. Obviously, we had TV on Sunday with the Kiss range from Tina Cox. Okay, so I've done all of the top row now. So now I'm going to come in at this angle. Am I still in? Yep, still in shot. So we're going to do this side now. So yeah, so we had TV on Sunday. So I've sort of haven't done this where I've gone backwards. So Sunday was TV with kisses from Tina. Yesterday was the shack with Barb. Today, we're twisting the day away with our Pico cutting. Tonight at 6 p.m. and 9 p.m., the lovely Dawn Wheeler will be doing a fresh cut ODS using our room with a view aperture dies designed by the lovely Mel um, you can use them separately or you can tessellate them to build up a bigger scene um, you've got four which are just under four four inches square and then you have the little quarterette ones the little diddy ones which are great for quick and easy cards or for coasters perfect for bookmarks so if you're if you do a market and you're looking for things to um, to sell, then those little set of quarterette dies are perfect for coasters and bookmarks, as well as cards as well, little notelets. Um, so it'd be great to see um, Dawn work her magic on those. So that's at six o'clock and nine o'clock tonight, and then she'll be back on again at ten o'clock and two o'clock tomorrow, so that's over on Create and Craft. Um, so, okay, so we've gone Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then on Thursday, talking of kisses from Tina. Um, Tina is on Create and Craft with the Pergamano show at 11 o'clock and three o'clock. And she is going to be using some more of Linda Williams designs. So I've seen the pieces she's going to create. Or well, she's going to show you how to create. <laughs> stunning. Absolutely stunning. So we've got lots to keep you occupied this week. And it started on Sunday, didn't it? Barb on the TV. The shack yesterday. Groovy Tuesday today, um, TV tonight, tomorrow, and Thursday. What a fantastic lead up to the bank holiday weekend. I can't believe Easter is, is here. Um, I mean, I've been eating Easter eggs for, for months. Not that I need an excuse to eat chocolate. Okay, so I think we're almost we're getting there, aren't we? Is anyone snipping along at the same time? Or are we just watching to see how it goes? Okay, so we've done that angle. So now we're gonna come in on this angle. Just like so. Um, yeah, so there's lots going on. And then, yeah, then we've got the bank holiday. 
then let's, let's do that one then. If we could, uh, I made a start on it last week. Um, and then I'll be back with you on Tuesday for a brand new project in Groovy Tuesday, which we'll have a look at shortly. Um, and then on Wednesday, I've got a brand new one day special designed by the lovely, super talented Jazz. These are absolutely beautiful. Um, Jane has very kindly prepared all the demos for me so I can showcase the designs. All I'm going to say at this point are squares and circles. That's all I'm going to say. I will give you a sneaky peek next Tuesday. So make sure you come back and join me next Tuesday, not only for the for the next project, but also for a sneaky peek of the ODS. So I've got that Wednesday and Thursday. And then I think, I think it's that following Saturday, I think Tina's back on again, I think. Uh, or is it Saturday after? I can't remember now. It seems to be that April is a sort of a, a bit of a, a short month. So, okay. See, I wasn't going to make a plan for this hour because whenever I make a plan and say we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we never, well, I say we, I never get to the end of that plan because I get distracted. So, um, but so far, so good. Okay, that's, oh, miss that one there. Okay, right, so that's that. Who had their first one on Boxing Day? Did someone, did someone have an Easter egg on Boxing Day? Or was it Hot Cross Buns? See, Hot Cross Buns, they don't agree with me. I love, I like them, but the peel in them doesn't agree with me. Um... I love the smell of them, especially if they're toasted, like toasted tea cakes. But they just repeat on me afterwards. And I know nowadays you can get all the different flavors. I know there's one shop, I'm sure there's more than one, that does chocolate hot cross buns. Um, maybe I'll try and get some of those, but I don't know whether they have all the fruit and the peel still in them. Ah, there we go. Jane says you can get chocolate chip hot cross buns. There you go. Um, okay, so Helen says she's been having hot cross buns. She had a hot cross bun on Boxing Day. Wow. Ken said lashings of butter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's got to run down your chin, isn't it? Like crumpets. Crumpets, you've got to have oodles, half a pack of butter on your crumpets. So it runs down your chin. So my ring lock scissors, Mary, my ring lock scissors are getting really stiff. Jim says WD-40 is the answer, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I suppose anything that has sort of like a, a little hinge or a sort of a, a bracket, um, you can't go wrong. The only thing I'd suggest is that when you do, I would open them up and put the give it a little spritz and then just move them backwards and forwards. Um, I mean, you can see here I've got sort of like some debris there um, where it's going backwards and forwards. So just give it a little wipe. Um, and then I would say just leave them open like so to dry. Um, and then just um, make sure none of the oil drips down to the 
the length of the blades but if it does you can just wipe it off i would probably say you want something like um uh, like a surgical spirit then just to wipe the blades just so that there's no oil residue on there and the surgical spirit just evaporates um so definitely give that a go ken said that's why he's got a beard because it catches the leftovers <sighs> who's made hot cross buns pauline has made some hot cross buns but done in two tins and second ones were a bit hard and burnt a bit they are easy to make though see i love um baking maybe i'll make some cakes over the weekend but the thing with making cake is that I have to eat them all as soon as they come out of the oven. But what I tend to do, and this is really bad, um, if it's safe like for a, a batch of fairy cakes or something and it says makes 12, then I tend to triple the ingredients. So I make three lots in one go. Or banana bread. Oh, maybe if the weather's not so good, I might make some cakes. It's always a good distraction. I haven't made them for ages. Okay, so we've gone all the way down that way now. So now we're going to tough it. We're on the, the home stretch now. This is probably where it all starts to, to fall out, I think. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. See, it didn't take long, did it? Um, why do we, why do we, why do I always talk about food on Groovy Tuesday? I suppose it's just like Tina. Tina's terrible for a, a chocolates and a little sweeties. Um, And our oopsies, oopsie daisies. I think we could make a brand of sweets called oopsie daisies. Tina's oopsie daisies. Um, yeah. I'm hungry now. Who else is hungry? <laughs> oh, dear. Who made Lorraine Bell made tablet? Oh, Scottish tablet. That is just pure. Is that what you mean, Lorraine? Scottish tablet, which is like pure sugar. My other half, he's um, Scottish, and he often get, friends often send it to him. Seems to taste different if it's made in Scotland. Um. But it is just pure sugar, isn't it? That's that one. Um, yeah, I've got a terrible sweet tooth. Not one for savoury. Okay. Ken's been shopping this morning. I've got a supply of buns in. There you go. Uh, I've lost my place now. Where am I? There we are. I have to look out for those chocolate. I saw an advert on TV. These are not any, just any hot cross buns. These are M&S hot cross buns. So I know M&S do them, but I'm sure other shops do a chocolate version. As long as they don't have the pit. Oh, so I'm coming off camera. As long as they don't have peel in them, I'll be fine. The thing is, though, with, with those, when you when you, I've had them in the past, the chocolate ones. Um, is that when you toast the chocolate ones, they don't smell the same as a traditional hot cross bun. Do you know what I mean? Oh, perfect timing. I don't think I could have timed it. You watch, we'll still run out of time. 
This, but this is the last stretch now on this. Am I still in picture? Yeah. Okay. Wonder how many bits I've missed. All right, let's give it a little shake. Look at all those the debris. Okay, so let's have a look. So I missed a couple of bits there, just like so. And then I missed. Oh, I missed all those ones in the same direction. What was I doing? Was I reading? Was I reading your messages? Because all of them, that one just hasn't snipped through. I missed in the same place. And then a few on that side. Where's that one? Oh, I missed it on this side on that one. Just a picture, yeah. Uh, There's always some that you miss, isn't there? Okay, so we've got that and that. Oh, I'll just have a look. Just got these little bits. Just hanging on by a thread. So let's have a look. Now, is this one here? Where's that one being held in? Sometimes you think you've snipped it. And it's... There we go. You missed that one. Where's this one? This was on this side, wasn't it? Uh, it was that side. There, 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 and there. So I'm holding it in my hand now because it's easier for me to see because I have the debris on the mat. Okay. Let's bring that into play. Let's turn it over. Okay, have I missed any bits? I'm just going to look on the big screen at the bottom. That'll tell me. Um, yes, I've missed a couple of bits. Okay, glasses back on. I couldn't see them with my glasses on. Um, so I've missed this little one here. Like so. And that one's being held in. Okay, let's go back to the big big screen. See if I've missed any more. Have I missed any more? Left side. Or have I just picked up those bits? Star above. Oh yeah, star above. <laughs> There's a hundred people watching me. Right, in my hand. That one just there. There we go. Right, any more? Any more for any more? Think. I think. I think. I think. I think. That's just the debris onto there. Just being held in. There we go. I think I have it all. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Tire dies this morning. Okay, so we've completed, or I've completed my strip, my bookmark. Now I can use this as a bookmark. I could use this as a border to go on my cards. I could also, remember we perforated around both sides of the design. So if I wanted to, I could go around and pico cut all of that as well, if I chose to but I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave it as it is because potentially I've got space here to personalize it so I could put somebody's name on here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to zoom out so we've got a, a bigger picture. Okay, and that, which way am I going? I'm going that way. Oh, I'm going that way. The arrow was hiding on the word. Okay, let me zoom out probably to about here. Okay, okay. So now <clears throat> we want to pop it into a bookmark sleeve. So we have the Pergamano bookmark sleeves. Okay, so I'm sure Stuart could pop a link up to those um, if you're looking for them. Now, the parchment, it was the A5 parchment, wasn't it? And it was just under two inches wide. And I cut it a little bit narrower 
because I knew I was going to put some paper behind it. So this morning, what I did was I had, I had loads of scraps of um, companion papers. So the companion paper is eight by eight. Okay. And the parchment is slightly longer than the paper. But that doesn't matter. I can trim this down. Because remember when we created design, look, it's got a, it's shallower here than it is up here. See, that was in the plan, really. I didn't want it to go all the way to the end because I know it wouldn't sit on paper. So we've got choices now. So I can go orange. I could go for a nice lovely blue. I could be a Jane and go for a nice bright pink. Okay, but because they're double sided, I could go for green. Then what's on the side of the blue? I could go for a, a lighter pink. And what's on the side of the orange? I could go purple. You know what? I'm going to go bright and bold and I'm going to go the lovely bright pink. Okay. Now, as Ken said, here comes the fiddly part. How do you get that in there? Okay. Parchment is quite robust. Okay. But because this is plastic and this is parchment, and you can see it's sort of it's all floppy and movable. Okay. When you're pushing it in, what can happen is it just won't go anywhere. Okay. So by putting a piece of paper or card, I mean, if I had bright colored card, I could use card, but card will, would give it the stability. Okay. But what we're gonna do is I've got a ruler. And if I pop the ruler into there, just to, to sort of loosen up the, the inside, so to speak, Okay, I'm just I'm just exercising the <laughs> the bookmark. Okay, let me just make it a little bit more flexible. Oh, hello, what's your name? Just these two eyes are there. Oh, sad. I know. Sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do, so if I take this, it may work now that I've softened it up. Okay. Just gently tease it into the bookmark. Okay. Now it may get to a stage where it won't go any further like it has here. So you take the same ruler, take the ruler, down to the bottom of the paper, then hold here, and I'm just gonna, and then hold here, and then just gently tease both the ruler and your piece of artwork into position. Okay. Oh, the joys of live broadcasting. Okay, so that goes there. And then all I'm gonna do now is just gently, woo, see how it went like that? Woo, that's a good sound of it. But there you go, so that's now in there. And because we've used um, double-sided companion paper, you could always put another piece on the back, or you don't, it's entirely up to you. You could stamp a little message on there, or write a message, or personalize it for somebody. But if you're selling your products at craft fairs or to friends and family, then isn't this a lovely gift? And isn't it funny how the, the parchment, it's not funny, the parchment has um, toned down the brightness of the pink, but allowed the vibrancy of the pink to come through. I could have put a ribbon, a nice bright or pale pink ribbon on there or a white one. 
So it's entirely up to you. Whew, that worked. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk the talk, but when you actually come to do it, it could have gone either way. I could have buckled it. It's one of those things, isn't it? So maybe what you want to do is take a scrap of parchment before you take your finished piece of artwork, take a scrap of parchment and practice the technique. And once you're happy with it, but definitely giving it a little um, massaging the <laughs> bookmark definitely makes a difference. It sort of removes the static from inside. Okay. So let's have a quick recap what we've done then over these past 14 sessions. We created a lovely frame and we have a bookmark. Okay. All from one plate. And there's so much more that you can get from this plate as well once you start playing with it. Okay. So looking at next week. I thought we'd have a look at a design from the lovely, dear Jane Nesterenko. Now, some of you may be familiar with this um, plate. Um, it was Barb and Linda did a craft along using this plate on the 17th of September. I nearly said, no, yeah, 1920, no, 2021. <laughs> no, it wasn't 1921. <laughs> in 2021 my goodness in the, they, yeah they did a demo in 1921 so you have this stunning rose from jane nestorenko and this lovely lattice frame with two sentiments um but it also if you want to it comes with just the, the lattice plate as well so we've got a, a combination where you can get both of them and there's a saving on them and you think, well, do I need this one or do I need that one? It's entirely up to you because what we'll have a look at over the next couple of weeks is that if you've just gone for this one, we can achieve this one. And what I also thought was that we've got Jane's lovely rose with some lily of the valley in there as well. But if you have any of Jane's other plates, for example, like the Agapanthus, Stuart will pop the link up to these two plates. Um, see the Agapanthus will fit in there. Or the smaller Agapanthus with the lovely butterfly. That will fit in there. Let's do it this way. Um, or Jane's Dahlia. Dahlia. That will fit lovely in there. And let me bring plates here. And you've got the single Dahlias. You've got the Fuchsias. From Jane, or you have the lovely little hummingbird and butterfly, or you have Jane's original rose, which is a different angle to the one we have here with different foliage, or you have the single stem roses. But I thought we'd have a look at this design over the next couple of weeks, and we can do, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on different. The project that was done in the craft along, there was two. There was a groovy one and there was a stamped one. And this has been done on rainbow parchment, but we're just going to keep it simple and just go with clear parchment. Okay. So that's what was done on the craft along on the 17th of September, 2021. Not 1921. Nobody... <coughs> in the room would have probably been born in 1921. And then I've got a few pieces of artwork to show you what we can achieve with it. So we have this piece by Glynis. Roses are one of my most favorite flowers. Um, for me, it's sort of like quintessentially English. Um, and I love roses, absolutely gorgeous. My favorite plant. Then we have this one by Sheila. So you can see it's the same design, similar color options, but Sheila's Pico cut in between all of that, if you want to do that. Then we have a different color rose. This one 
is from Carol Baker. And then just using the trellis straight lattice, this one has been created by Karen Jackson. Okay, isn't that gorgeous? What kind of orange squash? There we go, Jane, another orange squash fan. Um, so that's been created by Karen Jackson. And then this lovely little design, I had to double take on this one. This one has been created by our lovely Jane Telford. So Jane has taken that colouring technique where there's no raised line art, it's just colouring on top of the plate. Okay. So that's what we're going to look at over the next couple of weeks. Okay. And there's so many little tips and tricks and how you can change the look of it. Um, doesn't have to be a circle in the middle. You could have it as a square. Um, you can change the flower. You can change the size. I mean, what Glynis has done on that one is very clever because it looks as if it's a complete rectangle. But the join, when we look at the plate, let me bring the plate in, hang on. The, the gap has been covered by a ribbon. So, if you want to join me on this next part of the journey, I will be back with you at 10 o'clock next Tuesday for another episode of Groovy Tuesday. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Jane's designs are, I mean, she's a dear, dear friend, but her designs, and especially the roses, um, beautiful. So just a quick recap before everyone trundles off. Um, Dawn Wheeler is doing a fresh cut one day special for us tonight at six o'clock and nine o'clock on Create and Craft. And then again tomorrow at 10 o'clock and two o'clock. The lovely Tina Cox with her oopsies and her dilly doos will be doing the Pergamano show on Thursday at 11 o'clock and three o'clock. And then I'll be back with you on Tuesday for another episode of Groovy Tuesday. So enjoy the rest of the week. Enjoy your Easter bank holiday weekend if you're not working. Um, enjoy the Easter eggs and the hot cross buns, whatever flavour you decide to go for. And I will see you on the other side. Take care now. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Stuart and Jane and everybody else in the room. Take care and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.